This is the Marco Saining you have never seen before. I'm a rider who always wants to keep it simple as possible and I have always in my mind that I want to train what I need in the ring and not something what has nothing to do with jumping or competing in the show. I always want to be with the horse. I'm the most happy if I have a round that you don't see, if you have a long distance or a short distance, that the horses are that well not prepared, but the flat work is that good that you don't see it. It starts already with the control that the horses are relaxed. So I only can good work with the horse what is quite relaxed and focus on me. Control is then for me to make it easy and simple. It's not like a hard massage word and working them for hours a day. But mentally, they have to be free and they have to really focus on the jump and that you can handle really like going slower or faster or make the stride smaller or longer without uh, pulling too much. And that is a lot what I train that I many times have many jumps in a row and always to see in between, is he listening, is he not listening, but always try to do it like in a simple way. I train really what I need in the ring, and in the ring you always have 9, 10, 11, up to 14 jumps, or numbers, even more jumps. First of all, if you go like, in a long grass or the ground is not, it's not like a normal field. It's not professional, perfect building place. But I think for me, it's important if I go there and if I start trotting or cantering, I have the feeling the horse is watching where it is going and the movement is straight away totally different. They move her whole body in a different way than if you just go on a boring sand ring with uh, everything nice and straight without giving some advice from myself so uh, that I also like this a lot because in this case sometimes less is more. I like to do the course building a bit that every jump has to be straight in the same color and that it looks interesting for the horses. The material of the jump is very important and I really like to play with it. And even if I have a course, I have normally one small jump uh, where I jump it two, three times. It's an oxa or vertical. And then I normally start straight away with a, a shorter course or with a longer course. But the course is like build it up with small jumps in the beginning. But for me, it's very important if I train. I really want to train the rhythm and that the horse is focused on the jump is extremely important to have the same rhythm and I cannot stop in the jump I cannot make a break then it's easier but if you do a, in a roll they can get in a rhythm but they can get really out of the rhythm and out of the control but if you go in many cases you go over it and do it and do it and do it it's coming from itself that's my way a bit of training many riders not by the top ones but by the normal ones, they too much focus in the beginning to have a good jump on the horse. But between the jumps, this is actually for me by far more important. Before the jump, after the jump. And if this is perfect organized and you have a good horse, the jump is coming. At the end, uh, the horse has to jump with the legs and also with the, with the body, but not really with the head and with the neck. So this part is, uh, you must say, the sport part of the horse and that I have to train. Even in my riding at home, uh, like in everything, I like to be organized very early that I don't disturb the horse 
like the last two, three strides, that they can really be focused on the jump. Every time you pull in one way, you take the focus away from the horse from the jump. And even you don't have the distance like you want to have. So then you have to pull. It's not that I don't pull, but as less as possible. Not to disturb the horse. What I really try to train also that the horses can handle a lot of distances. I don't like if the horses have to do the last try too small or if they have to break it up. I always try to do it as simple as possible for them. It's even in the training, if I can tell over a pole that I have a shorter distance or a longer distance, that they always do the same jump. So I think this case you also can train because at home you can do one jump like all the time on the same set that is not so difficult. But to learn the horses that they do the same good jump with a bit longer distance or with a shorter distance, it's uh, more difficult, but that makes them also keep more wake up that they can handle the distance in the course because I cannot ride every distance like perfect in the ring what I want to have because uh, in this moment you have to decide and it's not all the time perfect but if the horse is thinking with you and he knows what they do and you let them think then you look always better as a rider instead if the horse cannot handle it. I was lucky if I was really young at the right time I had also different trainers from the ponies, juniors, young riders and I tried always to watch a lot of the good ones that I can learn from them and not try to copy it but to find out which is the best for me and yeah that is the main thing I what I did over the years now. I have a longer plan which shows are coming up but uh, normally I put the horses on the paper for the next four six weeks but it can also change if I have the feeling this horse needs now rest he gets the rest and if I think this horse needs a bit more jumping so that I can swap at the end I have to look always that I choose the best shows for the horses. Yeah.